are absolutely crawling with germs. You don't want to be in the hospital. It's a bad place to be if you want to stay away from infection. So what we're going to talk about is a safe solution. Actually, it's something that we talked about on our Prescriptions for Health radio show a few years ago, and finally the U.S. just did another study and showed that copper is the answer. It's amazing. This little mineral, this element, copper, uh, has so many antibacterial, antifungal, antiviral effects, and all you have to do is put it on the surfaces where people put their hands a lot, and it cuts back on infections in the hospital by about 40%. You know, most of the surfaces in the ICU in particular, because mm -hmm. that's where a lot of people get sick. And one of the things that we're really concerned about are these big, are these superbugs and the antibiotic resistant uh, bugs, the staph, infections. The MRSA, methicillin resistant staph, the C. difficile, some of the E. coli, the listeria, lots of infections that are really tough to treat. And you know, hospital infections are the fourth leading cause of death. I mean, after heart attacks and strokes and what's cancer. the third one? And cancer comes hospital infections. We'll try this one on. It actually is the fifth leading cause of death because the fourth leading cause oh, of death is it? the medications that we use to treat the infections because there are about 400,000 deaths every year from the medicines. So you combine those all together, you've got some areas there that really give you big numbers fast. But the good answer is that copper kills 90, 97% of the infections that you can find in ICU. That's the intensive care unit. And if they do simple things like put it on the surfaces, like on countertops and things instead of the stainless steel, because it takes the stainless steel 72 hours before the germs will die. If it's a, a copper alloy, something like brass, it takes four and a half hours. And if it's copper, it only takes 90 minutes for it to die. But of course, you need supplemental cleaning in the in the units. You don't just want to just, just have no, copper No, but it's such itself. a good start. And you know, we've known this for years. It's not like it's something that's brand new. And what's surprising is that we haven't taken advantage of it. A lot of the times there are breakthroughs in healthcare that are amazing. And we know about them, and yet we don't do that much to take action because it takes so much effort to make a change. What I think is exciting about this is it's something that's non-toxic. We could put it in our homes. It can be in convalescent hospitals as well as, as uh, general hospitals. But in the hospital, if, if they would put it on, like the push plates on the doors, on mm -hmm. the telephones, on the call light, on the side rails, on the light switches, all those kind of things, there's many more places that they could put it, but if they could put it in all those places, it would just make a huge difference. You know, we were reading about a way to treat vaginal infections about three or four years ago. And what I told you, and this kind of broke you out in a, in a laugh, is that you could use a stainless steel douche bag and fill it with water and use that and it worked against certain kinds of, vac of, of vaginitis. Oh, it sounds like they need a <laughs> copper douche bag, not well, a that, stainless steel one. Well, that's one. the point I was going to make. It would be even better to try that. And it sounds ridiculous when you when you talk about it like this, but how simple can it get? And how A lot of people have copper pipes in their houses. That helps. That's where the hot water uh, usually has copper pipes. So that probably has some great antibacterial action. So. It's novel, it's interesting, it's safe, it's not that expensive, it lasts forever. I mean, how much, what do you want to be able to use something that's really effective? And you know, patients are very vulnerable to infections. If they're in the hospital, they're sick, you know, and they're immunocompromised and, and um, they're, they're much more susceptible to getting infections, particularly if they've had a surgery or something, you know, and they have an open wound. Mm -hmm. So for sure, we should be doing what we can our hospitals should be taking the initial steps to try and do something to change things. About the only place I remember seeing a copper door handle was in a restaurant, where apparently they knew something about infections, or else they just liked the color. Maybe, maybe I can't be like sure it. what it was. Well, because they're concerned about how to keep it clean, because sometimes, you know, it kind of turns blue and different things, you know. But um, another thing I wanted to add here that doesn't have to do with copper, but as far as killing infections, you know, that this secret... It's not really a secret, but something that I've been talking about, it's been one of my favorite tips for years, is about the hydrogen peroxide mm. and vinegar because that combination, if you put one in one spritzer and one in another and spray one after the other, kills all the same kind of things, the fungus, the, the bacteria, and the viruses, and so forth. So if they could use that in the hospital and get rid of some of these chemicals that, that are, are really so toxic, toxic you know, to I mean, people. A lot of them have triclosan and other kinds of toxic 
uh, chemicals in them that really are not a place where you'd like to use them because the place where when you're in a hospital you have to detoxify and your livers are, and your and the rest of your body that's detoxifying has a big job in front of it and to add more toxins on top of that just doesn't make any sense when you have simple things like your hydrogen peroxide and vinegar trick or using just something like a copper surface it makes a big difference inexpensive safe effective Maybe we should be going back to what they did in Egypt years ago, thousands of years ago, when they knew they could use it for things like wounds. Uh, they would use Infection. copper solutions for it. Hippocrates used it himself. So copper is a very healing metal. So people, you know, use them many times for arthritis. They wear it on their wrists. It's a great anti-inflammatory. I mean, you had a story that I think is worth repeating. You had a trigger thumb that was really something. You had gone to the orthopedic surgeons a few times and they injected it with steroids and it, and it helped but it came right back a few weeks later. And it later. was very painful. It wasn't just a trigger thumb. Yeah, it was enough that you couldn't function very well. And one night I brought home a copper bracelet that one of my patients had given me that I that I thought was kind of nice but you you noticed you noticed it. And I said, "Well, would you like to wear it?" And you said, "Yes." And you wore it overnight. And I didn't even know. So there was no placebo effect. <laughs> I had no idea that it could be healing. And so what happened the next morning? The next morning, I'm like, "The pain is gone. I can't feel it. It doesn't hurt anymore. The trigger thumb had stopped snapping." <laughs> right. So to tie this all together, copper as a surface uh, material is something that should be incorporated in a lot of places in our life, not just our hospitals, but especially our hospitals. And we'll find that copper has a lot of effects that are interesting besides just fighting infection because it's anti-inflammatory, it's important for our body to be able to make red cells, and I'm sure that we're going to dis we'll discover more in the future.